Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Worship on Sunday the 22nd of November. Today's service, although presented by the elders, has been prepared for us by Peter Sharrocks, who is a retired Methodist minister. We thank Peter for his continued help and support during our time of vacancy. And we're particularly grateful to him for sharing with us one of his own worship songs. We assemble together for the joy of company, companionship, the realization that we are not alone. We rejoice in sharing our hope and our confidence in the love, grace and wisdom we have discovered in Jesus, holy child of Mary the Maiden and Joseph the Carpenter. We find consolation when we embrace and are embraced by the spirit of unity a surge of mutuality, acceptance and trust in a just and holy goodness. We give way to the well of thankfulness that emerges from our appreciation of the world around us, its grandeur, terror and beauty, and for human diversity, neighbourliness, forgiveness and love. Adoration lifts our hearts in response to the meaning and inspiration of Jesus' being and way. A curse of the virus around us means that we are not to sing aloud our praise, so in our hearts we may be valiant and merry. Combating the virus demands that we refrain from holding one another close, but we can hold one another in our hearts and speak with kindness and affection. Holy and creative spirit, in you we lift up our hearts. Redeeming love, we seize upon your grace and energy that in these troubled times we may live gently and imaginatively with all we need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for the hymn, O love of God, how strong, how true.
Reading today is taken from Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you and remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and the incomparable, incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over every, everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. In this is the word of the Lord. And now let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now Peter will sing for us, Give, we, give Me Someone.
Restoring to our common life Holy Communion now. This reading is from Matthew chapter 25 beginning to read at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was sit naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or get thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and in visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or in pain or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today I'm sharing the words written for us by Peter. Greetings, Newport Pagnell. Sorry that I can't be with you in the flesh. You have pursued me from time to time to leave your Sunday morning work service, but I have been reluctant. I'm not quite sure why. Something to do with losing confidence as the years of my life accumulate. Something to do with my increasing discomfort with what we might call orthodoxy. Anyway, the persistence of Jan and the gentle nudging of Graham, you've got me. People have often asked me, usually on a Saturday evening or out of sheer curiosity, what are you preaching about tomorrow? I always avoid the answer they are looking for and say that preaching is an event and leaves room for spontaneity and surprise. Some would call it the movement of the spirit. It's also about interaction with the people and the context at the time. I say this because, of course, whatever I say from now on in the sermon, it is not preaching. Then I was informed that nearly 80% of the New Testament consists of letters, Paul's mainly, and so I thought I would write you a letter, something personal, conversational, in tone and contextual taking account of the times we are in. So my friends, I greet you and thank you for inviting me to share this morning with you. Thank you too for keeping the flame of witness and worship alive in these difficult times. I have of course wrestled with the lectionary texts and will focus on the gospel. 
My sympathies gravitate towards all the stuff about responding to the needy with loving kindness. We have all been persuaded over recent years with the assertion of God's bias towards the poor. Referencing Jesus's consistently responding to the underdog, the vulnerable, the afflicted, and even the despised with acceptance, understanding and encouragement. So this section of St Matthew's testimony is no surprise, except perhaps by the element of the surprise experienced by the kind-hearted, that their compassion had anything at all to do with the divine godly mission or linked to Jesus in any way. I am reminded of the time when I was led to discard the bias of the church towards the notion that it is only people conscious of the divine who are charitable. The teaching of St Paul that the church is the body of Christ might lead us to believe that we alone are the true agents of holiness, the authorised redeemers of troubled humanity. I found out that this is profoundly not so when early on in my ministry, I was appointed by churches in Telford to be their youth worker. I was commissioned to go to those young people whose need is greatest. There were, these were, of course, the most troublesome and alienated. Typically, the church had scrabbled together just enough money to make fund appointments. I was the resource, but without resources. I cast about for support and over the years established fruitful, loyal relationships with a wide range of people willing to give their time, skills and hearts to help the young people. Whatever I ch achieved was with them. Hardly any of them professed belief in Jesus, only one went to church, regarded themselves as secular, socialist or simply motivated by care for kids. They would have been surprised, confused or insulted if I were to suggest that their efforts were holy in any sense. However, in as much as they gave themselves. I think this is a very important reality to respect and affirm. The church needs to be very humble when assessing its own virtues and very affirming of the good deeds of others. When venturing in the world of community involvement, it is a matter of positive faith that we seek to work with others humbly and without prejudice. Our gospel reading today challenges us to believe in and engage with whoever is moved to live in love and demonstrate kindness. These are our allies in the building of new life in a troubled world and quite often our betters. Another thought, what is meant by our own acts of mercy to people in need being a gift rendered to Jesus without us being self-conscious about it? I can only think that this happens when our own hearts are one with Jesus. And as lovers share a spontaneous response instinctively, then something like that relationship is envisaged here as I and my father are one, so we are one, said Jesus to his beloved disciples. Let's move on. When I thought about what I might say today, I was drawn towards the tailpiece of the text. Something so far outside the sentiment of the first. I suppose contradictions were inevitable when the main subject was judgment. At the end of all things, who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? 
Matthew is still in the age of the three-tier universe and he seems to have imported an outlook drawn from a strong theme of Judaism which had been popular two centuries earlier. Literature which dealt with the last things. These scriptures are referred to as the Apocrypha and were conceived when Israel was suffering hard times at the hands of the enemies. The prophets of the time envisaged an end time when God would rescue the Jews and obliterate their enemies. Matthew seems to have felt the need to include some of this as he is writing about a similar theme. I think we can do well without this towel piece, but it can serve as a warning. First, it does clearly envisage a world in which our lives matter, a world in which there are consequences to the choices we make. The importance of this has been abundantly clear as we seek to control COVID-19. Unless we all act together in the interest of the common good, with a mind to the well-being of our neighbours and especially the vulnerable, the consequences are dire. Likewise, unless we are able to translate our best intentions with regard to climate change, we are warned the consequences will be apocalyptic. Be warned. One more thing. This tailpiece speaks of eternal damnation for those on the wrong side of judgment and seems to demonise them. This, of course, is at odds with Jesus's work of salvation and a million miles from Paul's affirmation that nothing can separate us from the love of God. There is always hope and no one is ever condemned forever. When I began working in prisons, I went to make an introductory training session at Wakefield Prison. One of the speakers was a young prisoner. I remember to this day one sentence that he said. It was this. Do not give up hope for us. Well, I'm sure that isn't more than enough for one letter. We are together in this. Our hope is in the Lord, trusting in his faithfulness, his likeness to the eternal reality of divine mercy truth and love, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Peace be with you. Amen. And now, together we will listen to the hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Cradling the world and holding one another in prayer. The following prayer is based on the prayer by our friend Reverend David Moore. Now each prayer ends with the words, 
draw us into your grand designs, uh, which you are invited to repeat. God of all places and all faiths, draw us into your grand designs. God of mystery, yet also God of laughter, draw us into your grand designs. God of all humanity, children and the elderly, and all those in between, the babes crying and the old who gasp for breath. Draw us into your grand designs. Having, been, having quietly closed our eyes to prayer, we open our inner self to your way and purposes. Draw us into your grand design. We take deep breaths, inhaling the memory of grace received through the faithfulness of Christ, the kindness of strangers and friends. Draw us into your grand designs. We open our heart in silent prayer for our nearest and dearest, and also for those we find hard to like, love and forgive. We give thanks and prayer in silence for those who are engaged in healing the sick, supporting and comforting the dying, and researching new and healthy pathways to the future. Heavenly Father, whose mercy and love know no bounds, bring us peace that only you can bring to all those we have named, that we may find solace during their troubles and have peace in our hearts. And last but not least, that we, delighting once more in your goodness, may find our faithfulness reinvigorated through friendship, humour, conversation, sacrifice, prayer, forgiveness and song. In the name of Jesus. Draw us into your grand designs. Amen. And we draw our service to a close with the hymn, There is a spirit in the air. <laughs> 